Okay, um, thank you very much. And, and my talk is I do not speak your language, but I do speak improv. And it's about my experience when I was a Fulbrighter at, um, in Kazakhstan in a small university there back in February, March, just recently here. But before I really get to talk a little bit about that, the, the, the picture that you see up there is um, something I took a few years ago when I was on safari in Kenya. And I watched the, the, the young jackal and the young vulture they were looking at each other under their parents' eyes, but their parents never interfered with the two to come together. And it was totally nonverbal, obviously, because they don't speak the same language. And I do not speak Russian, and I do not speak Kazakh. I do speak a little French, which actually came in handy for me when I went there. So this is sort of what I felt it kind of epitomizes applied improv. And, uh, and this is just my troop for the first two classes I took. I began taking classes in 2017. Six of us are still involved in improv within the Cincinnati area um, through Improv Cincinnati. Um, in case you don't know where Kazakhstan is, it's south of Russia, it's west of China, it sits where a lot of the other stands sit, and it has one small little sea area there called the Caspian Sea. Now, as a Fulbright specialist, it's a little bit different than a Fulbright scholar. Fulbright scholars actually write proposals for a university where they'll go for a semester or two. A Fulbright specialist, you can fill out any time during the year. And you will get, if you're lucky, a three-year appointment to sit on the bench. It doesn't mean you get the play. Then you bid on proposals. And I had bid on one proposal before and was turned down. And this one came up and said, well, I'll probably get turned down again, but it was an interesting proposal. So multilingual education, well, okay, I'm not really particularly versed in that, but the uh, University of Cincinnati does have many languages spoken there. Via interactive and cognitive teaching, I'm an IT guy. We are not the most interactive people in this world. Uh, you just have to understand that. But it was accepted. And I did not expect that. I had to go tell my department head that, hey, they want me to come in October. He said, no, 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 no. Can't do it right now. You have to wait till uh, the winter. Will they wait till the winter? And, and they did. They said, yeah, come out in February. It'd be great because our New Year's is done when New Year's should be done. It's done at the vernal equinox when spring begins. I said, you'll, get, you'll have a lot of fun during that time period. And that's right when you, I'd be leaving anyway. So um, we're down to Shimkent, which is southern part of, of um, Kazakhstan. S weather is similar to what I would say Cincinnati gets. Um, it does get cold, but it's not real, real bad. And it's certainly not as cold going further up north or over at Almaty to the um, eastern side of things. This is the university. This is one of their five campuses right in here. It's Maras University. They're a small private university, about 5,000 students, uh, five campuses fairly small. They have a small IT program there, and that's what I was there to help them with their technical component. Now, when they teach, and this is part of Kazakhstan in general, K all the way up through college, your classes are taught in English, Kazakh, and Russian. My main contact there, she grew up in during the old Soviet time period. She spoke Russian, no Kazakh. She went to an English school. And, and that's how she was able to, to kind of help me with things. Um, the other guy, my main technical component guy there, he knew all the mechanics of English, but really couldn't speak it. I mean, one on one, he could speak with me. And we also found that, hey, Google Translate's great. It's never perfect, but it is great. It still does help. And so we use that to communicate back and forth. But they would have a PowerPoint slide with three languages. And there would be some teachers who spoke Kazakh and English, some that spoke Kazakh and Russian, some that God knows what they spoke. But they would have to read the slide. This is what this is really is happening here. And so you had to do that. And it's like, how do they do that? It's crazy. Um, so I did have some of those cultural challenges, and it's a really rich culture. It um, goes way back when. Excellent horsemen, originally the horsemen, this is where they learned to ride horses. 
Um, I did learn uh, some uh, kind of an interesting thing. If you come to tea, if my wife I invite you to tea, that means tea, cookies, and some chocolates. If you go to tea in Kazakh, that means you get, whoops, you get a meal that looks like this. And if you don't eat, they're going to ask what's wrong with you. Um, that was really difficult for me because I just got done eating lunch, and then I invited for tea to go to one of the professor's house, and why aren't you eating? You're insulting us. And it's, I can't. Your stomach needs to grow. I like my stomach the way it is. Thank you. So there's a lot of cultural things I did run into. And it was kind of humorous when you go into the labs. This is a computer lab, and they still would put on um, jackets, the lab jackets. So it's kind of humorous to see this in a computer lab. Why are they putting a jacket on a computer lab? But anyway, it was fun. Um, and I actually went to a French class down below in the middle there. That I very first class of biz was actually a French class, and I got to speak French with them, and they got to speak French with me, and we knew our French wasn't that great, so it was kind of fun. I didn't have to worry about getting the pronunciations correct. Um, but the big thing was I was interested. Do they have an improv scene? Well, guess what? They have an improv scene in Kazakhstan, and it is very, very old. It is older than rap is in this country. It's called the Atish. This was like, whoa. It took me a while to find more about it, but finally I found a book from, on Google Books, but it was from somebody from Indiana University, wrote about it. And it's like, oh, this is so cool, reading about this stuff, what they do. So it is, it's a musical improv played with instruments, and originally, back in the days before you had cell phones and everything else to take your distraction away, these things would go for hours until somebody would surrender. But basically, it's competition. It doesn't have to be. And they have six forms of this. I go, gosh, six forms of this thing. This is really neat. I, we do some of this stuff. Short exchange, just back and forth. I'll give you a riddle. You give me the answer type of thing. Um... There's the insult. We have done insults in some of my improv classes before. Just insult each other. Just go through and insult as best you can. Uh, so that it was really fantastic when I saw this. And they have a short and long form. So it's there. It's just not there in the form that we know it as. But they actually have it there. So it was finally, it's like, this is fabulous. Um, but I also like, was asked about all the holidays in the United States, and I went through all the holidays, and I knew all holidays, and they, they didn't know St. Patrick's Day, so I had to give them St. Patrick's information. And one of the things I did was I taught about limericks, and it was great when Nancy yesterday did the limericks, in, and I was like, well, I got two, and I found limericks worked really, really well, so it was kind of neat. Finally, I did teach some improv games. The one I had the most fun with was throwing a knife, throwing a lion, and throwing my granddaughter, baby Hazel. And, and they were really gentle with Hazel. And I don't think they ever lost Hazel, but I know the knife and the, the lion got dropped on the ground a few times. So it was kind of interesting. The other thing I found, I had to avoid too much English, even when I would speak slowly in special English. I was better off to demonstrate things, or I used um, some cards and things along those lines, like Storymatic cards or Rory Story Cubes, which I really like because they're just pictures and images, and they have Doctor Who as well, so I just like was really great. And I gave some classes to the English teachers and English students to the point where they've asked me to come back to teach the English students, which is not at all my forte. So we'll see where my adventure goes. Thank you.